All right, now watch closely. This is break advice, right? Now recognize. Break advice. And I'm teaching all the time. So, now since I'm teaching all the time, I have this problem that I need to tell everybody what this is about all the time. So now you can make it easier by just clicking on break advice and you could watch it. Yeah, so like that I could just erase that, you know, like put that mark, erase that out of my teaching list and things are going to appear in a way that we're going to raise the bar and break in worldwide. All right, today I'm going to teach you, um, I would say, nice principles about how to learn how to headspin. Yeah, if you ever want to get into head spins, but that's another question, right? Because sooner or later, you're going to look like me, right? If you're going to do too much of that. But that's like, I'm coming from a long, long way. And uh, back in the days, you know, like we used all kinds of products on our head directly. We didn't have head spin caps. Sometimes we would spin with helmets and stuff, you know, but in showcases and stuff, we would put silicone spray or furniture polish on our head to spin and you know what furniture polish sometimes even does to furniture yeah and it's it's not looking pretty if you don't wipe it off right away so here we go so first of all when we're looking at the shape of a head spin and we look at our anatomy then uh, it has to make sense in a way right so from the beginning you gotta make sure that everything is balanced your body has a center your center is very important and also that you know and that you balance things out. That you find yourself within a room and you know exactly where's the front, where's the back and where the two sides. All right? This raises your spatial awareness. So now, once I'm getting on my head and I'm starting to spin, as soon as I fall, I know exactly to which side I fall. All right? But that only happens if I have that special awareness, spatial awareness. So, it's very important that I always start on the same point yeah, so that if I fall, something's gonna happen and I know exactly, okay, this is where I tilted, this is where I was off balance, so if I start again, I could correct myself. So now talking about that, now look at me, right? We all know where our center is, okay? So now there's different possible ways of doing headspin. First thing is I'm gonna show you um, an exercise that you should do while you're practicing headspins to strengthen your back. Uh, most important thing for almost all the moves is that you need a very strong core. Everything else almost comes automatically afterwards because after your core, your, your arms and your legs are just extensions. Okay, so for the first exercise, you should get on your head, straighten your arms, bring your legs down. And from here, you just go up and down like this. If you do that a couple of times, if you've never done it before, you feel it in your back immediately, right? But if you've done it a couple of times every third day or so, you know, just to condition your back and stuff and to condition your balance as well, you saw how I pushed my hand on the floor and how I kept my arms long, it's strengthening your shoulders and it's gonna help you to pump and all of that, yeah? So it's also strengthening your neck, your whole spine from the way, way from the bottom all the way to the top. This is like, but mainly here, that middle part, this, that's where you feel it the most. So. Um, let's talk about positions. So in the beginning, for the very first spin, you are allowed to go in your waist, with your legs and your hands, right? That you pump. Also, think of economics. Uh, a lot of people, they get on the head, they stand, then they go in the opposite direction and then they go into the actual direction. Where, if you think about it economically, Go on your head right away and put your arms like this, instead of like this. So like this, you immediately, you're in the right position to start spinning. So from here, and then you start, go off. So don't start like this. Go immediately, you get on your head, and you go from here, and you start spinning. So that's fine. So that's number one. I would say only on the first, maybe still a little bit on the second spin, you're allowed to move in your waist, and you're allowed to move your legs. Afterwards, if you pump, if you push, you should actually only use your hands. Yeah, only use your arms because as soon as you move here, you change your center. As soon as you move your legs, 
you changed your center. And it's always very hard to get that center back. That's why sometimes you, people, you see people rotate where your legs are almost like touching the ground, yeah? And they're not really balanced anymore. And they have to catch their balance back. There's no way you could skip this. You need to work and work and work and work. I could give you shortcuts. I could give you advice. But you have to put in the work. So let's go from position to position. First position, while you're spinning freely, should be this. Yeah? Legs naturally open. Legs naturally open. Yeah? Make sure that your face also is always forward. As soon as you do this, you're gonna have the effect that your legs are gonna go in and all of a sudden you end up like that, where one leg is in the back and one leg in the front. I want you to spin like this first. It's the easiest way. You use your weight, the more weight is down, the better you spin. As soon as you go up a little bit, or you try to get into drills, the spin is getting harder. So we're getting there. So that's the first, that will be the first position, all right? After a while, if you close your legs, first thing of course is you could do this. Then after that, you can go into this. Now the funny thing is, once you do this, right? And you close your legs, of course it's getting a bit harder. But as soon as you close your legs, they become one. So here, you're still able to balance out. If you're balancing out, never balance with your full legs. Never do this, right? Because you're changing the radius. You see now, my right leg is in the front and the radius becomes way smaller on that side. So, to not do that, if you're falling or anything, just bring your knees down. Just work here. This is way enough. So you see, so by bringing the knees down, you're already changing your center enough to find your balance again, yeah? And it's not gonna look funny. As soon as you use your full leg, you tilt too much, your spin is gonna be different, and you're gonna fall. Um, so first position, here. Second position, from here, you either close your legs, or you can also go into a ball head spin, where you're spinning like this. But then after, you close your legs, right? And from here, as soon as you close your legs and they link in, they become like one block. And all of a sudden from here, you have to balance more out in your waist and your hips than anything. From here, actually now, the hard part is to get your legs from here to, to here. That's the hard part, there's like a little whip. There's no way you can go slowly. If you can go slowly, it becomes really hard. So usually from here, there's like a little point where you're going like a little bit slower and you go, cluck, yeah? And there you have balance again. Now you see, I'm all centered and from there, it's gonna be easy to bring that up. For people, for people who think that might be a bit too hard and who prefer that figure four style, right? Um, look at this, figure four style. If you spin like this, okay? That's figure four style. This is just wrong, okay? When I'm standing like this, there's a big difference because see here, I don't really keep that body tension, all right? When I'm here in this position, when I'm here in this position, I have the possibility to just link my heel to my knee. As soon as I do this, again, my both legs become one part. So now I just have to figure out how to work this one part. While when I'm here, this leg is shaky, this leg is shaky. There's less body tension, all right? Now, before I get into, before I get into this position, watch this. Very important. When I'm standing on my knees now, right? Now I'm in the same position, we just rotated the position 180 degrees. When I'm standing in this position, watch this. Make sure that your knee is, is either standing very straight or always a little bit to the front. The reason for that is, if my knee goes a little bit to the back, if I'm like this, first of all, it's really bad for my back. Secondly, it's bad for my hip. But third, you know, and most important in this one right now is you want to spin, you want to hold your balance. Now look, look at the position, I'm not even arched really, you know, it's just that my knee is a little bit to the back, but watch this. To the front, I have all this leeway to balance out, right? But to the back, if I'm here, I can't go any further. There's no way I can go further, this is it. So if I lose balance to the back, I fall, that's why Keep your knee to the front, keep your knee to the front, and from here now, I can use all this and I have leeway to all sides, yeah? Side to side, 
front and back, but the front and back is more important than, you know, like as you see right now. So now when I'm getting on my head, same thing. So one, after that, foot comes to the front, foot comes to the front, two. Still now, again, I'm in parallel. This leg is in parallel to the other leg. Look at my upper, upper legs. I'm not standing like this. I'm standing like this. From here now, I connect and I bring, I make sure that this knee is in the front. I'm not spinning like this. I would fall. Like I said, I would arch my back. Oh, I, I arch my back now and I can't go anywhere further to the back. So it's really, really easy to fall from there. So keep this knee to the front, bring that here. And from now on, the most important part, important part is now now when you're spinning and you connect, stay there. Stay there, that's the most important part. Once you stay here, this part is gonna be very easy, yeah? Once you stay here and you feel like you lose balance, just open it up again and go again until you can spin freely with your two legs connected. From here, you bring up one leg, you keep spinning, you keep spinning. Then you bring up the other leg. You keep spinning, you keep spinning, and then you could even close in your hands. Yeah? But that's basically it. So even in my drills, even when you drill, you never really stand straight like this. You never really do. Even there, I always keep it a little bit bent, you know, so that I don't arch to the back, so I can keep those drills just a little bit. You know, sometimes it looks a bit funny. But it's a little bit out, but it doesn't matter. When you spin and nobody's going to see that. <laughs> yeah? So when you're standing up in your drills, this is how you get there. So let's go through the, same, uh, through the positions again. So you're spinning. Okay, from here. Because of your spin, okay, you're going, you're going, you're going. Boom, until you're here. Keep this position, both legs in parallel. After, you touch with your heel, you touch your knee. Okay, so once you're here, you spin, you spin, you spin. If you lose balance, you just open quickly again, you go back, yeah? And then when you know you got balance, you straighten that back leg, you go from here, and then slowly you bring that other leg up, and then you can do yo-yos, yeah? You could do these, and so on and on. There's all these possibilities, or even like if you get into this position, you're spinning from here, same thing. One, two, three, four, or one, two, three. All that is possible, but it all depends on this position where you connect your knee to your heel. All right, guys, you see how I look right now? I do not have a sunburn. This is what happens if you stand too much on your head, but it's actually good for blood pressure. Now recognize. Now recognize. Now recognize. Break dice.